Hey guys, for more like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe, the like button and the notification bell. Okay everybody, it's uh, Kevin Wadsworth and uh, Patrick Grimm at NorthstarBadCharts.com. Welcome back to our show, it's great to have you with us. And uh, who have we got with us today? We've got uh, Michael Oliver, uh, Momentum Structural Analysis, MSA.com. Michael, how have you been keeping since we last spoke? Good to be here, guys. <laughs> Good, Hi, stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, the, the markets have been um, pretty interesting over the last few weeks and months oh, actually, yes. since we last spoke and uh, we've seen... Some interesting moves uh, right the way across uh, stock markets and uh, cryptocurrencies and precious metals. And uh, in fact, precious metals in particular, I think, have been driving everybody completely nuts. We had a nice move up and we're uh, currently uh, in a little bit of a, a pullback situation at the moment. But essentially, um, I suppose you could say that over the last two and a half years or more, we've been really trading uh, sideways overall within a, within a, mm -hmm. a range of very clearly defined upper and lower boundaries to those uh, to, to that sort of range. Um, so, what have you got to, to tell our audience? Are we going to be uh, crying over what happens over the next few months, or well, have we got something a little bit more interesting to look forward to? A real quick summary. We think stock market's going to roll over. That The attempt since the June low, <clears> and then again in the October low, which was lower than the June low in most indexes, there's been rally efforts, and it's redundant. It was just, it's like nine months now, buying, 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 and yet the market is wallowing. So it's a lot of money and a lot of time spent by investors hopeful for a quote soft or you know, a tender landing. And they, the data points seem to make them feel good because they're strong. Of course that bothers them because then the Fed will continue a tight policy. But on the other hand, you know, they, they keep buying the stock market. Right now they're cheering the chip stocks because chips are having a real good rally because they've got cut in half. Well, the S&P lost 20% last year. NASDAQ lost like 32%, NASDAQ 100. Chips were down a cut in half. And so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that the, uh, this beat up sector is having a nice rally. Everybody's fixated on that. We suggested a few months back, start watching the financials. It's hardly a topic of conversation. We cut focusing on KBE, bank ETF, and XLF, the broader financial ETF. They're very, very weak this week. In fact, the bank ETF is breaking numbers that for it, the S&P would be down another row about 100 points comparably, and the NASDAQ would be breaking trigger numbers as well. But the, all of a sudden, the banks have gotten exceptionally weak, and I don't hear anybody screaming about it. In fact, the KRE is making new bear lows today. That's the regional banks. KBE is a hair's breadth from taking out all the lows. And if you look at the KBE price chart, Unlike the S&P, which has a staggered sequence of lows, it has a flat floor, very vulnerable looking chart. And momentum says it should be vulnerable, but nobody's talking about the banks. Now, I suspect uh, Fed Powell will be worried if, you know, it, it, who cares about the chip stocks or uh, home builders. But when the banks get in trouble, uh-oh. And all of a sudden, without headlines, the bank ETFs are collapsing. Why? We say that's where you should turn your attention because I think we're going to get ambushed. I think that what the Fed has done in breaking their bubble, seven fold bubble in the S&P, 16 fold bubble between 2009 and 21 in the NASDAQ 100, that bubble is broken. And the data points will follow it. They will not lead it. The other major asset categories are telling us something. Specifically, if you look at what happened last year and put it on a grid, you know, NASDAQ down 32%, big negative column, S&P down 20, real estate down like 27%, uh, muni bonds, high yield corporate debt all down significantly, and bonds down 40% almost. In fact, T-bonds and TLT are back to price lows that they were trading at the 2009 bear lows. If the stock market were matching the T-bonds, S&P would be about 1,000 right now. Okay, so anyway, we suspect the bond market, which has been with the stock market, will divorce this year. I think the bond market, the long end of the debt market, is probably going to find a bottom soon. Not generate a big bull market, but stabilize. So that asset category will 
Why would it stabilize? Well, perhaps because of fear. Oh my gosh, the stock market's not holding. Let's go to something else. And if bonds look stable, then and obviously asset managers will move it. But then look at the, the key market you just mentioned, Kevin, gold. Uh, Fed announced in the summer of 2021, they were going to start raising rates. They started raising rates in 2022. Okay, so let's take the close of 2021, 1820s on gold. Oh, okay, here's an interesting price chart. We Normally we focus on momentum, but since everybody's focused on price, we wanted to show something important here. By the way, that, that last rectangle, these are monthly bars of gold going back to the year 2008 here. The last bull market top in 2011 and 12 looked very similar to what we did up prior to last summer when we broke through the bottom of the box, everybody thought, oh gosh, it's a replica of what happened in 2013. Namely, gold's crash, we're going into a bear market fight. We argued based on momentum, which we're not showing here, that when that breakout occurred on price, that it would be a bear trap. In other words, it would not sustain. It went three and a half percent below that lower line of that lower end of the box. Three and a half percent got to a low at 1613. And within a couple of months, we'll back up pushing the highs of the range again, get the 1959 in January. And if you look at the monthly closes there, that almost matched the two prior high monthly closes. So price chart was very misleading. But if you, the close of 2021 and the close of 2022 are right above 1800, about 1820. So gold last year had a net zero year, no losses, unchanged on the year. Compare that to other major assets. Gold was saying something. Why wasn't it going down if the Fed was raising rates aggressively last year? Why was stock market and bonds going down and, and so forth? Why not gold, right? It makes sense, but it didn't. Why not? Maybe it knew something was coming with the banks. We'll find out soon. Anyway, the point of these charts here is to show that if you're fixated on price charts, be cautious. Make sure that momentum is agreeing with what price is telling you. Otherwise, momentum could be uh, price could be very deceptive, which it was in that case. Now, on the next page, you'll see some other price chart comparisons we're going to make that are opposite to the bear case. Back in during the, the bull move that started in 1999, actually, gold was $253 at a low back then. And it started moving up in 2001 and two, and it surged into 2008 and went into a range, well, actually with a sharp sell-off in between. It had two peaks, either side of 1,000. And then it had that October sell-off in 2008 that happened to be coincident with the stock market briefly, very briefly. Gold immediately turned around after that October low. Within several months, was back to 1,000 again. It was back up to its high, but look what happened. They sold it again up there. So remember that. The third attempt merely went back, reasserted itself back up to the top of the range. And the seller said, what the heck? I'll risk a nickel. I'll sell it and risk the high, a new high and see if I can make some money. Fine. But look at that break that occurred in 2008 in October. It broke a massive, very clear uptrend line. So price chart gave you a downside breakout. It was a trap, which it sustained for only part of the month of October. And by November, it was right back up again. Okay. Now, drop down on the page, you'll see another example. And by the way, when it reasserted itself after that third attempt, that sell-off you see there, it went back to the highs again. And on the fourth attempt, it blew right through and went to 1900 within the next 12 bars. So that range bound topping action. Now go back to the prior page there and go down to the bottom of the page. Uh, scroll down. Yeah, I think scroll you'll down find another chart. There you go. Now here's another pattern similar to that one you just saw. This is looking back at the bear market low in 2015. And you'll see that initially gold had a first recovery rally. That circle, by the way, is where MSA went long term bullish at 1160. Uh, we had a surge on the monthly prices up to 1370, a huge 300 point rally in a, in a handful of months. That was its first recovery statement. Okay. Then they sold into it. Okay, fine. 
went back up again. And over an arduous period of about a year, you finally went back up to about 1370 again. In fact, I think the high was 1365 at that second arrow. And they sold it. So a second time, they're selling the top, what ended up being the top of the range. And that sell-off that followed went down and broke a multi-point uptrend and broke a horizontal. So you had price breakage. But again, look what happened. As soon as you broke your horizontal line, you spent part of a month below it. And it said, phooey, and went back up to the highs again. Got up close to the highs. You didn't make the highs again, but you got close. And the guys came in and said, let's sell it again, risk a nickel. Okay. Again, a third peak at the top of range. But look at the sell-off. Just like back in 2009, when you went back up and recovered to 1,000, you had a pullback that was mild. You had a mild pullback here in 2019. And when you turned up on the fourth push, to that 1360, 1370 level, you went to 2000 in the next 12 bars. From a 1370 level, you went to 2000, 2070, in fact, in the next 12 bars. So it's that fourth attempt that you've got to watch after making the three highs. Now go to that next page and you'll see the current market. So if you like price chart overlays, we're, we're suggesting look at the price chart that in fact, we do have an overlay here that matches those two prior seemingly topping situations. Major high at 2000 plus in the summer of 2020, had a pullback, okay. Went back up in March of 2022, again, to about 2000 plus, had a pullback, but the pullback after the second peak, just like the other two situations, broke structure. In this case, multiple bottom, there were three lows from 2021 through summer of 2022 that held at 1670 level, the black horizontal line, and you broke through it last summer and fall, August, September. But look what happened, nothing. You went three and a half percent below that line, turned around and shot back up to 1959, basically back up to the highs again. And again, the guy said, hey, let's sell it and risk a nickel. Okay, fine, they're selling it. Right now, gold's dropped to 1810 last month. Right now, we're trading about 1830. That, that chart's a day or two old. That's showing about 1820 right there. It's a little bit higher. But you can see we've so far, it's third month off the high. If the bears don't get some real blood in this sell-off, instead, they just waste time like those prior two charts did, where you had a mild pullback after the third attempt, you go back up a fourth time. And we're arguing this price chart overlay will fit those two prior situations where it was the fourth attempt that you blew your lid off and finally convinced folks that, hey, it's not a sale at 2000. Uh, they've been doing it repeatedly. Gold should, and it had the technical break just like the other two as well, where you went down and blew all the price structure you could blow and nothing happened. So we bring your attention to this and we suggest that probably we're in the same situation we were then. We're prepping for the break out above this range and, the, and a, a fulfillment of the bull trend that's been underway since 2015. That's uh, spine, t spine tingling stuff there, Michael. I'll just pause, okay. pause for a second there because, you know, th this sort of buildup that's been going on for so long now and the um, the kind of uh, fractals that you've, you've shown there, the previous examples where we've had pretty much exactly the same uh, price behavior with reference to the you know the horizontal support and resistance that you've you've pointed out it ties in with other stuff that's going on in the background as well and i'm thinking particularly um the, the battle that gold is having versus the s p at the moment and we talk about expectations for the s p to to show weakness going forwards and um the gold to s p ratio chart is is also very very delicately poised to um or is in, is in i suppose you could say an ideal position to launch another attempt at a breakout um, and a gold breaking out versus the S&P is something that doesn't happen very often. And um, S&P breaking down versus inflation is also something that doesn't happen very often. It's it's poised to do that or is doing that right now. And it is actually only the fourth time in a hundred years that uh, S&P has made one of these uh, breakdowns versus inflation. So listening to what you're saying there, um, I think Patrick's probably the same. It's uh, you know, it, it, it all ties into part of a very big picture. Look, and, and the trolls, uh, Michael, the trolls, they're, 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 they're bonkers. Everybody's given up on the precious metals like 
I know that's not a signal to go along. You, you've clearly drawn yeah. drawn the lines. We're waiting for that, and people have a hard time understanding that. But it's it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's no, it's been arduous, and uh, we'll flip to some silver charts in a minute. You'll see what silver's been doing while gold's been doing that, which is sort of typical silver behavior. While gold has been in the sideways range, with that one brief false breakdown, silver's been in a down tube, parallel channel. During from 20, actually, it made its actual high in January of 2021. It reached over 30 bucks, slightly taking out the summer 2020 high. But then since then, silver's been in a cascading downside. <clears throat> we didn't anticipate the time it would take. I still think silver is going to make a massive move. If, if that gold is going up, it goes through that high. Silver will whipsaw from a laggard to a leader. It usually does that. In the case of the recent range bound gold situation where people are tired of it, they really got tired of silver and gold miners. Instead of sideways, they were zigzagging down. When gold reasserts itself, and it's the mama market, when it reasserts itself back up again for that fourth attempt, let's say, and you go through that high, and the price chart, people finally say, oh, golly, we were wrong. It really is going up. That's when the money flow goes back into the silver and gold, which are teeny little uh, silver and the gold miners which is a teeny market, you know, capital wise. Uh, so if money starts to move out of a large asset category like the stock market, it finally desperation sets in. And we'd argued when we got bearish on stocks in January, 2022, actually two months off the high, we said the bubble's broken, we're going down big, but the first leg will be an arm wrestling match. And sure enough, it's been an arm wrestling match where it's a lot of overlapping declines in the S&P you know, you, you get decent rallies that always that turn your head. And so it's not been a collapse. And in fact, right now, if you interviewed, you know, look at CNBC or Fox Business, I'm sure you'll hear as much, if not more chatter about a bottom than you will about further decline. So it's a big debate. If that debate goes by the way, because the S&P rolls over and says, oh, geez, this, this holding pattern didn't hold. And people realize that it wasn't basing. It was just stalled. And they suddenly look over and see banks making new lows for the bear move. And it suddenly smacks them in the face. Oh, something's going on here. That money's going to go somewhere. Well, already last year, it obviously went into gold. And in fact, silver had an up year, 2 3% last year versus where it closed 2021. Now it's below there now. But it actually had a net up year while the S&P was down 20% and NASDAQ down 32 So already last year, to some extent, was saying, money is flowing into these monetary metals. Now, if it becomes bleeding obvious that gold really is going to engage again, then we think silver and the miners, which have been in a downward process, will whipsaw to the upside aggressively, more so than will gold on a percentage basis. And it'll be simply more money moving from this large asset category that people are escaping because they finally decided, no, it isn't a bottom stock market. Now, and obviously there's a point at which, and I think gold knows this, if the stock market enters a new decline and this one becomes more serious and more convincing, the data points will follow the market, almost guarantee it. In other words, the data points we're looking at now is, oh, gee, things are looking so good, hunky-dory. Well, go back and find me a bear market where the data points led the market down. No, it's usually the other way around. The market leads it and suddenly the data points a year later, oh, good, they turn sour. Okay, that's the where the Fed suddenly has to panic. And especially if the sector that's being hit hard in the stock market is banks. They don't care about it. Michael, chips. because <laughs> sorry, th this morning, I, I just looked at the K KRE and the KBR and I just posted it and I, I, I said, man, they're... Uh, the 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 K, the regionals are below a monthly breakdown line. If it closes where it is now, the KRE yeah, they're below the lows of over. the entire bear market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the KDE and is not, but it's near it. Yeah, why? Near and all of a sudden, like in the last two weeks, especially this week. In fact, this morning the S and P is up, and then the banks are down a couple percent. You know what's going on here? Yeah. Uh, and no headlines. I love it. Uh, yes. Get the headlines later. Uh, but you can be assured that the central banks, they can talk one policy, but if all of a sudden the unraveling starts to affect the financial markets, not just the stock market, but the financial components, gold knows this. The central banks will revert to what they're made to do, print money. 
that's my conclusion. And, and I think the charts that we saw in the archival charts of gold price charts, the overlays, indicate a similar possible outcome to those prior yes. breakouts, meaning something happens that triggers it. And by the way, back in 2008, that, that first congestion zone we saw, and when the S&P broke down in October of 2008, which was not the end of its bear market, it went on down to March of 2009, if you recall. Gold went down for that one bad month of October, so it did join stocks at that point, whereas it had been holding real well during 2008. Suddenly, late in that year, it joined stocks for one bloody month, but then immediately reversed and made new highs by early 2009. Stocks weren't making new highs. They were still making new lows then, while gold was back up making new highs. So I think you can get a similar situation now, where you get a stark divorce between what the stock market does and what gold does. It certainly, it certainly does feel as though, um, to me at least, looking at some of the charts I've been looking at over the last uh, few days and weeks and even months and years, that um, a combination of the US being in a position where, um, you know, uh, bond yields, 10-year yields are currently sitting at, what, somewhere close to uh, 5%. Um, we've got 130% debt to GDP. And with debt repayment, um, on well over 30 trillion of, uh, of national debt with, with those kind of uh, yields seems to be problematic. And I was looking at the 10 year, mm -hmm. well, basically looking at the yield inversion, 10 year minus two year yields. And we're currently lower than the low points that coincided with um, the dot com um, disaster, also the uh, financial crisis, and also Black Monday. So it, it, it's very um, concerning to see charts like that plunging new debts and all of the previous um, lows on those charts were associated with some kind of incredible sort of historic market turmoil. Um, and it kind of feels like we're sitting on a, a ticking time bomb at yeah. the moment. Well, the real collapse in the 2007 <clears throat> to 2009 bear market came late, you remember, in October, really, about 2008. So market had made its high in October of 2007 at 1570 S&P. And it wasn't really until a year later, and there was a lot of arduous struggle in there, by the way. Jan, February, March of 2008, there was a sharp low down in the 1200s, and S&P rallied strongly into May, sort of like the rally we've just had, where you went up and took out a prior little zigzag high to convince everybody, oh, look, I bottomed, you know, broke a trend line, all that stuff. And it's when that rally, that strong rally failed in May and gently rolled over, didn't roll over rapidly. It arm wrestled its way back down. And it was in late summer of 2008 before you finally blew out the lows again. That's when the blood happened. And that's when your headlines started to show up. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up before that. You know, the, the stories of the financial firms on Wall Street in trouble. Uh, that didn't occur till late. Uh, in fact, you know, but six months before the bottom, there was still a lot of blood left to, left to go uh, until March of 2009. So anyway, I think that's what's about to happen is that this divorce we've seen between gold and, and these other assets, namely it went sideways while it went down, is going to further itself. In other words, gold is now going to go up, especially if you go back on that fourth attempt, like I showed. And silver and the miners will join in, like an elastic band snapping because they've been pulled the other way too far. Uh, and by the way, let's look at the silver charts so we get a chance because uh, they're, they're interesting as well. Because um, I know everybody's all concerned about silver. And it, it, this is a uh, monthly price of silver going back to the summer of 2020 when it got up close to 30. And then in uh, early 2021, it actually traded over 30. And then it started this downward staircase while gold was in a sideways range. Now at the tail end of its sell-off last summer, uh, August, September, especially, silver broke through the prior lows that had been in the 21s. Uh, between late 20, uh, 2020 and early 2022, you'll notice there's a bunch of lows under $22 there. Well, you broke below that last summer, and so you had a price chart breakdown. Okay, and you went another couple months, and uh, about four more dollars got down to almost $17 there last uh, September, early September at bottom, the month before gold bottom, by the way. And then shot up. Now look at the price chart. Instead of a flat ceiling, it's got a down. I don't plot it here, but there's a channel there. And if you plot the parallel channel, you'll what happens is yeah, across the you could draw a trend line too across those highs. 
you basically topped at the top of the channel. So it's like sort of going, gold going back to the top of the range again. They sold it. In the case of silver, they sold the top of the channel. But look at momentum below. In this case, we have a, a one-year average oscillator, a 12-month average. It had a one, two, three, four-point very clear downtrend structure that it broke through in November of last year. And the rally high that followed broke, not only broke the trend line, but took out the prior high. There's a high back in March of 22, that, yeah, that high there. You exceeded that. So momentum, unlike price, one, broke a downtrend. Two, produced a higher high. It's broken the pattern of descending highs. So momentum has said something there. It says, I'm no longer in negative mode. Our strong suspicion is that this pullback that you've gotten here to 20 buck area and on momentum back about to where you broke out above that trend line, by the way, if you'll notice on the momentum chart, you pull back to your breakout level. If you start to gel around here, so if silver starts to gel in the $20, $22 range, let's say over the next rest of this month into next month, then we're arguing that that pullback low is just like the gold low. It's a, it's a, it's a token pullback prior to an up the next upturn. Pardon, my dog is barking. <laughs> you hear that? So um, I've got one here as well in the background. I, I have my home office. Uh, uh, you'll send mine gonna, off as well. <laughs> she's an old dog. I'm not going to go tell her to be quiet. Okay. Oh, you can't see anyway, obvious tricks, as they say. <laughs> if you take silver back up above that price high we just made, it was twenty four seventy something in January. Then the price people are going to see a trend line on the price chart that momentum's already broken out above the comparable version of it. But the price chart guys will draw their trend line and they'll say, hey, it broke out. Well, momentum already did that. Plus, momentum took out the prior high. So we suspect that this pullback in silver is not the same as the other declines you see over the last year and a half, or two years, sequentially low. We think momentum is telling us, uh-uh, this is probably a pullback to a higher low in price. And next time, price is going to go up and do what momentum just did, blow out the prior highs, in which case you're going to engage the price chart, folks. You're going to make them suddenly tell them that what's going on here is, in fact, was a, a bullish situation. Exactly. I think the, the price chart folks are looking at the, an area between $27 oh. and $28, aren't they? So Yeah, that would uh, turn them on big time. No yeah, question. On the next page, <laughs> next page is another oscillator of silver. In this case, it's weekly. And this is through... Uh, Tuesday of this week. Uh, these are weekly bars instead of monthly. And here, the, the oscillator below, instead of using a 12 month, they use a 40 week average, which is similar to 200 day in duration or similar to a three quarter average. It did the same thing that the 12 month oscillator did. Namely, it had a channel on the momentum chart. There's a sets of low closes along the bottom of that momentum channel. And we I threw a parallel downtrend line through the highest close back in the summer of 2020, highest momentum close, and it carried forward at the same angle. And look where the rallies peaked in early 2022, up against this theoretical resistance line, therefore defining it as resistance. Then look back at late last year, and there was a rally up toward the zero line where it bumped that line one more time, had two bad weeks, and then in November blew through the channel. That was momentum statement. Okay, it's over, guys. And then that rally high also took out two prior rally highs going back to the summer of 2021. So momentum made a statement. I'm now in a positive zigzag pattern. I'm no longer in my bear pattern. Now, price isn't telling you that yet. But usually momentum will make a turn first, go into positive mode, and then price will follow in the next leg. So we suspect that this pullback in silver on momentum, especially look at where it's pulled back to again, about to where it broke out on the momentum chart around the, just below the zero line. If you start to gel there and it's already uptick from where you see it here. And we see the next few weeks, you start to upturn off this. We think it's exactly what the gold has been doing on its price chart. Namely, it broke through price levels that scared everybody, aborted, got back up in the range, in Silver's case, it got up to a downtrending channel. And this pullback is a token pullback. It's not a pullback to a new low. It's a pullback prior to going to make a new high. And when you break through that channel top on Silver, we think you'll push through the 30s and, and engage big time. Because already at that point, obviously, gold's going to be above 2,000. 
if silver is going to do this. So we think that's what's going on. We think the shift in assets toward monetary metals has already been underway last year. That's why silver had an up year, 3%. Gold had an unchanged year. And yet the Fed's fighting inflation. No, they're fighting the stock market bubble. That's what they did. And that generated a crisis because underlying that bubble is a lot of errors over 12 years of investing that will come undone. And gold knows it. <laughs> that is an, a masterclass in uh, st structural momentum analysis. I mean, that uh, really, if for, for anybody watching this who um, really hasn't taken a close look at uh, momentum and how you can use uh, momentum on technical uh, stock charts to to give early indications as to what price might uh, might might be doing this is about building evidence it's about weighing up probabilities and um discerning the most likely path um and as i'm sure michael is is well aware that you know there's a constant need to assess and reassess all of the information as it's coming in so i hope everybody really appreciates michael's work here because there's a, there's a lot of hard work and effort goes into producing these reports um and clearly you know um we are at a, a point here where the precious metals investors could be could be looking at something uh, a lot more positive going forwards through the next uh, let's say the next sort of six months or so as we go uh, towards the middle part and uh, later stages of this year so um and and those charts they're, they're very good they're very good at starting to pick out those early indications before the rest of the market becomes aware before price makes it obvious and this is the point key point here by using uh, momentum analysis, you can actually identify these moves ahead of price making the obvious move. It becomes obvious on the price chart at some point, but uh, momentum analysis gets you gets you there first. Interesting stuff there. What, what do you think, Pat, on all of that? How does that fit in with, uh, yes. <laughs> with, the, with your ideas? So, my, Michael, if I would ask you this final question there before we wrap it up. If you, if I'd ask you if uh, you care about daily headline news, what would you be your answer? Strongly agree, strongly disagree. I'm sorry, question. We just kind of muffled on the sound here. Go ahead. If if I would ask you if you um, if you if you follow daily headline news in your analysis, oh, oh, would you oh, okay, agree yeah. or disagree? Uh, the news will lag the events. I mean, the the, the news will lag the technical. The, for instance, what's the story behind the banks? Why are they collapsing? Yet the, the price charts are collapsing. Okay, and there's no headline. It's not the main story on CNBC or Fox Business. So if there's some news behind it, it'll come after the fact. But I think right. that's what gold is anticipating, and I think the main underlying point here is that if the stock market does roll over after this nine months now of effort to base, and and turns heads, and people say, "Gosh, I'm so disappointed. I thought it was bottoming. Oh heck, what do I do?" When desperation sets in, then more assets will move out of that category. They've got to go somewhere. And it's already demonstrated that, you know, gold is at least steady during 2022 and even now into 2023. It's 1820s. That's where it was at the end of 2021. And the Fed's been raising rates all during 2022. So ignore the headlines of the Fed. The real headline there is going to be when the paper asset category starts to implode. And also watch mini bonds because some of these cities and states aren't in very good financial shape. Somebody's got to pay their bills, okay? And uh, as you pointed out, uh, Kevin, the, the debt <laughs> the debt ratio of the US government and, and its ability to pay its bills at those yields. So, you know, somebody's got to come in and, and print that money. And we think this, this policy change by the central banks will go full reversal because of the nature of the bubble collapse. And by the way, the US has the biggest bubble. You go to look at the European markets, they don't have the bubble we've got. Seven-fold increase in S&P, 16 in NASDAQ over years. China doesn't have a bubble like that. Yeah, they can go down with the US, but they don't have a bubble. The only market, major market overseas that has anything comparable to the S&P is, is the Indian market, the Bombay Sensex. It had a six-fold bull move. Like the S&P had a sevenfold, and it looks pretty toppy. Uh, in fact, it looks very similar to 1929. But a lot of markets in the world don't look like the S&P. But if the S&P caves and we get headline associated with it after the fact, you know the central bank will pay attention. Can I uh, can I just ask you one 
one quick final question for me as well. If the Fed um, pause, um, interest rate rises, and if they in fact start to pivot and start to um, reduce rates, what's your view on the effect that will have on the stock market? Because a lot of people, a lot of people are talking as if a, a pivot, if you want to call it a pivot, is going to somehow be a magical cure. No, um, if you go back and look, uh, 2000, 2002, 2007 to 2009, the Fed pivoted, okay? Didn't do any good. Once the bubble breaks, and those weren't even in bubbles compared to what we have now. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. bull markets that were doubles or triples. We've got a seven-fold S&P <clears throat> bubble and a 16-fold NASDAQ. When that comes unwound, it'll be so strong and forceful, it will not follow the Fed, it will lead the Fed. Exactly. The Fed will not yeah. be able to stop it. They created a monster and the monster comes undone. They can try to hose it down all they want. Remember what Bernanke did with mortgage-backed securities. You know, He tried to defend that market, ended up destroying it. Because yeah. when the Fed came in to monopolize that market as a single bidder almost, it, it, it made it a non-market. It wasn't liquid anymore. Its pricing was false. So they couldn't stop that bear market. It finally stopped on its own in March of 2009. And yes, there were a lot of policy changes before and after, but the before didn't work. Uh, and I don't think these will work if, if, they, yeah. if they reverse. And again, they're taking such a hard line now. It's going to be intellectually hard for them to reverse because they'll look like fools. <laughs> no, really, you I mean, mean they don't? Intellectually, <laughs> intellectually, even Fed supporters will say, geez, you know, they went too far one way. Now they're going to, oh, you know, and they'll lose faith in, in the notion of a central bank. Can, you know, they, look that any, can they look any more foolish? <laughs> it reminds me of, uh, of uh, kids, babies. Uh, my younger kid, when we, did you wash your hands? And then he, he knows he didn't. And then he says, yes, I did. And th then I said, come here. I want to see your hands. And they're dirty. <laughs> did you wash your hands? No, they doubled down. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, he cracks yeah. and he accepts yeah. it, but that's like the, the kid pivot. Well, the, it's okay. They're the kids. Fed, yeah. But yeah, they're kids. So I'm comparing is, yeah. the Fed to kids. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someday uh, people will decide, you know, we don't need a monopoly pricer of money. We don't have a monopoly pricer of, of the price of beef, monopoly pricer of the price of oil. We let markets determine those yeah. things. But the price of money, no, we have a central bank governs the price of money. Oh, great. Non market force. Well, you get the consequences when you do that. Right. And we're seeing them. It's always reassuring when the people that are making these decisions and screwing up the economy are pretty much the same people that give us our credit ratings as individuals as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm told my credit rating isn't good enough. But pretty much well, the, the one thing thing. they can't control is the gold. So, you know, that's why gold is, uh, it's always been money for what, 3,000 years now. You know, it's, it's been. Can, can, can you uh, t tell all, all the viewers uh, where they could find all your work, Michael? Sure. Uh, if you'd like a sample report, go to Oliver MSA, Momentum Structural Analysis, OliverMSA.com, and there's a contact button, and you'll find my email address. Just send me an email. I'll send you a bunch of sample reports, including the charts you just saw. Beautiful. That's good stuff, Michael. Really appreciate it, and we appreciate your time talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Kevin and Patrick. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. See you next time.